uh, Megane is a key product for Renault and we're trying to recharge it with technology. It's a quantum leap in terms of usability, speed uh, and, and possibility and upgradability. This car is really launching the generation three of our Snapdragon digital cockpit solution. Digital transformation of automotive means that cars are getting connected today. So we are getting data downloaded from the cloud and we are uploading data. This first of all allows for a diagnosis of the health state of the car based on this data, but it also enables us to update and upgrade software, which is running on the infotainment or entertainment system inside the car. And last but not least, cars can also inform each other about warnings or about road conditions, for example. The Snapdragon digital chassis is actually very similar to what we see on the hardware side with electrical vehicles with the skateboard, which is a unified hardware used across multiple cars. Qualcomm's idea is to do the same for the electronics, where we have a single electrical platform, a digital chassis, which consists of the cluster, which consists of the infotainment system, telematics, but also car-to-cloud services and beyond to unify the electrical components inside the car, to scale the performance based on the SOC chip level, but not by just adding boxes, to provide something which is very pre-integrated, but still adaptable to multiple car lines and to multiple OEMs. So the, the overall engineering effort gets much less by reusing this digital chassis. The project we had to do, we had two main challenges. The first one was to deliver a new technology for the car industry, which was the adoption of uh, Android and uh, Google services. At the same time, we also wanted to change the paradigm of working with tier ones, doing internal development, capturing the value internally so that we could master the pace of innovation, but also the quality of what we would deliver. And in that perspective, since the automotive industry is not willing to take too much risk, we wanted to make sure that we work with partners that were very solid in the Android world, that had the capability to productize professional software at a large scale. I would say the ambition was very modest, was to design a system that the driver and the passenger would use. And for that, we wanted the system to be as close as possible to the smartphone world meaning uh, being very performant, having a very good UX, having a very quick boot time, having a swap between different HMI pages to be as quick as possible. So all the characteristics for which you like your phone, we wanted to have that in our system. The challenge, of course, is that those smartphones have increasing performance levels year over year. So therefore, for a car manufacturer program, which usually takes like three years in development, it is very difficult to select the right hardware platform in the beginning, making sure that three years later, you still have a state-of-the-art system. So I think this is where we work together. I think we took some risks here, but succeeded bringing something into the market, which is still state-of-the-art in, in some of the leading systems in our times, even when compared to smartphones. To me, this is the most important thing for car manufacturers and tech companies to work together all the time. So one of the reasons where we touched on earlier already is for the car manufacturer to become aware and to get access to the latest and greatest technology as early as possible to make sure that after those three years of development, you still come out with a state-of-the-art product. But it's also the possibility for the car manufacturer to influence the product specification to make sure that those specific needs planned for the car infrastructure are being met by the component rather than causing additional boxes, additional chips to provide the full functionality. The pace of innovation, the pace of delivering features to the customer is going to increase. That industry is going digital and we have to go directly to the source of the innovation which is, in my view, companies like Qualcomm.